Hello, class, and <clears throat> excuse me. Welcome to today's lesson on five seven. We're going to talk about inequalities in two triangles. <clears throat> so today's goal is use the hinge theorem to write inequalities and find possible side lengths. Our essential question is: How does the hinge theorem help us compare sides? Like all other videos, if you need to pause it, please feel free to do that. So our first slide here, looking at the picture, what happens to the red side as you open the door more? So if we're noticing, right, we have this angle and we're talking about the red side right here. As we open the door more, notice the side is larger. The side is larger, meaning Right? If that angle, that hinge right there, is opened up more, well, that side across from it is going to be larger. And that's what gets us to our hinge theorem. Hinge theorem talks about that if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of another, and the included angles are not congruent, then the longer third side is opposite the longer or the larger included angle. What this is getting at, notice here, angle A, right? Angle A is larger than angle B. Well, what that tells us then is that this side that it opens up to is going to be larger than this side that it opens up to over here. So I right, notice the two sides have to be the same. Right? Notice we have one take mark two, one take mark two. And then that included angle is what's different. So let's use that here. <coughs> so we have two triangles here. They have two congruent sides and then an included angle. We notice here angle B is 120 degrees. Angle D is 68 degrees. And so what we're trying to do is compare, well, the sides across from them, which one's going to be larger, right, dealing with AC and EF. Right, hopefully we realize since AC is across from our larger angle, it's going to be bigger than EF. So right, similar idea here. We have a triangle here. Right, they share this side, so they have two congruent sides. And now we have an included angle, but notice we're only given one of the measurements. But what we can do, right, we've known this for a long time, a linear pair, or two angles that together make a line, they add up to 180. So if this one is 87, <coughs> that means this angle is going to be 93. That angle is going to be 93. So what we're focused on is the side that's across from these angles. And again, right, the one across from the bigger angle is going to be larger than the one across from the not quite as large angle. So we also have the converse of the hinge theorem. We can actually kind of work backwards a little bit. Uh, if we know the sides are, one side is larger than the other, if we're looking here at BC, and then we compare that to YZ, we can then say the included angle, or the angle that's across from those sides, the larger side is going to have the larger angle as well. So there's our converse. So if you need to pause this to write this down, please feel free to do so. And move forward. So we have this picture here. So notice the side lengths. Right? This one, DC, is across from this angle, and this one is 23. We look here at this angle, across from it is 22. All right, 22 is less than 23, so what we can do is we can set up an inequality here. We can go, okay, well 75, 75 is gonna be larger than x minus 13. 75 is gonna be larger than x minus 13. So what we're now going to do is we're going to add over the 13. We do 
that, we get 88 is greater than x. So we have that part of our inequality, but we also have to think about the lower end. Right, so right now, I'll write our inequality up here. So right, x is less than 88. Now we need to figure out, well, what goes here? And the key thing to look at is we can never have an angle be zero degrees. We can never have an angle be zero degrees, or of course we can't have it be negative either. So what we need to look at is this angle right here. We have to think, what does x have to be to be at least greater than zero? And right in this case, it'd have to be at 13, right? If x is equal to 13, it would be zero. So that means it has to be greater than that number, right? It has to be greater than 13. If it was 13, that angle would be zero, but right, anything higher than that gives us at least a measurement for that angle. And so our range of possible values here would be 13 is less than x, which is less than 88. Last one here. So we have these two angles here. We look at the sides that are across from them, right? 20 across from a 50 degree angle. And this angle is across from the side that says 18. Right, we're going to set up inequality again, right? This angle, since it's across from the larger side, is going to be greater than this angle. So looking here, right, we're going to subtract 4, subtract 4, get 46 is greater than 2c, and then we are going to divide by 2, 23 is greater than c. So let's go back up to our inequality, I'll write one out here, c is less than blank, right, this value is going to be 23. That value is going to be 23. And now we have to figure out, okay, on the lower end, what's our value going to be? <clears throat> so looking at this, right, we're trying to think, well, what could make what we have zero, right? We need to be larger than that. We need to be larger than that. And so if we think about this, we could just set this part. I'll do it in red so we know what we're talking about. All right, we have this, subtract 4, 2c is equal to negative 4, divide by 2, All right, if c is negative 2, that makes that 0. So what we know is that c has to be greater than that, All right, because if it's at negative 1, if it's at negative 1, we'd be at positive 2, we have a positive angle over so I'm just checking what's the range of those values. And so that's it. That concludes today's lesson on 5-7.